Every day, one of Abir Musi's lawyers comes to the Manuba women's prison to visit her. I visit Abir Musi to exchange updates with her about her case. She's the leader of a political party and an opponent of President Syed. Musi is facing prosecution for several vague offenses against the government that could carry the death penalty. But she remains politically engaged. Her morale is high, she's a fighter, and she gives instructions for the party, the Free Destoyan Party. We don't have authorization to film the prison, but as he's leaving, Nafa Laaribi gives us a message from his client. She believes she's the victim of political violence, which aims to exclude her from the presidential elections, which should be held at the end of 2024. Other opponents without electoral ambitions have been in prison for almost a year. Along with six others, Johar Ben Mbarek has been accused of conspiring against state security. One Sunday night, his sister and father are preparing food to take to him in prison. The food they are given in prison is disgusting and inedible. So we have to make food for my brother and his cellmates. Putting together the basket brings back painful memories for his father. He spent six years as a political prisoner in 1973. Fifty years later, and it's now his son behind bars. It's awful talking to my son on the phone. I can't touch him. I can't hug him. Human rights organizations have condemned the number of Tunisians in arbitrary detention and facing charges without evidence. Dates have not been set for many trials, and pre-trial detention can legally last up to 14 months. That's the limit for the first part, and after that we go to the second part, which is the indictment chamber, which will assess the charges according to the investigating judge, and that is not limited by time. The government has been almost completely silent on the conspiracy cases, and in a rare parliamentary hearing on January 16th, the Minister of Justice dismissed a question about it, insisting that they don't talk about it.